Hi all, in today's video, I'm going to tackle the number one question I get asked by family and friends when they're about to purchase a Mac computer. Which Mac should I buy? Well, it could be a daunting task. After all, which Mac computers are the right one for you? How much RAM should I get? Should I get a big hard drive? Should I get the faster processor? Should I buy Apple Care? All of these questions are hard to answer when you're really not familiar with um, RAM and hard drive space, etc. So I'm going to help you know at least the questions to ask yourself and to the Apple rep when you go to the store, as well as show you a wonderful website that Apple has where they compare different models once you know the questions to ask. So the first decision that you have to make when you're deciding to buy a Mac computer is, am I going to buy a desktop or am I going to buy a laptop? Obviously, if you're going to buy a desktop, you have three models. Um, so on the screen here, I have the Mac Pro, which is the powerhouse, the Mac Mini, which is the low-end Mac, which doesn't cost a lot, and the iMac. So let's start off with talking about what the differences are between the three. Well, you can't really buy a bad Mac. Any one of these computers are great Macs, and they'll service you for at least a couple of years until the new ones come out. But the Mac Pro, which is this black cylinder, or trash can as a lot of people refer to it, is the best Mac that Apple has. They have different versions of this that give you faster processor, larger hard drives, um, increased RAM, and obviously if money is not an object and you want to get the best Mac out there and you're looking for a desktop computer, go with the Mac Pro and put in all the bells and whistles if you can afford them. What is most important about the Mac Pro is that it's a powerhouse. It can handle video editing, graphic design editing, but it doesn't come with a display, so you would have to purchase that separately. And an Apple display can cost about $1,000 if you want to get something good. But I'd highly recommend it if you're a graphic designer or a video editor. Next on the mic is the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini in this lineup is the low-end Mac, but it's so small and it has something a little special that the other Macs don't have, which is an HDMI port. Um, Apple probably figured that this computer being so small could actually be great at hooking it up to your HDMI TV, and they're right. This computer, if you hook it up to your HDMI TV with just an HDMI cord, so that port, uh, HDMI port is on that Mac Mini, you can plug it directly into your television if you have an HDMI TV and hook up a wireless mouse and keyboard and be able with that wireless mouse and keyboard to uh, watch movies out of your iTunes account, uh, basically surf the web, um, especially if you get that wireless mouse and keyboard and sit in your bed or in your living room and just surf uh, the web with your HDMI TV. And you can always add um, a monitor in another room uh, if you'd like for this mini, but it makes a great media center computer. I highly recommend it. I have one of them and they work terrifically and I watch movies on it and I surf the web and it works seamlessly. Uh, the next one in the lineup is this one called the iMac. The iMac has something unique about it as well. It basically is a built-in monitor and computer as one unit. It's the best computer to go out if you're looking for a mid-range computer, you're doing graphic design video work, there's nothing wrong with the iMac to handle that. Uh, try to get uh, the ones that have the higher processor, the i5, the i7, I would go for an i7 if you can, and Retina Display would be amazing on this if you would care about color, so you could pay a little extra for that. Would you really uh, need the Retina Display? Could you live without it? Sure. So if it's a matter of pricing and you have to choose between some of the other features, I would choose between going for a higher processor speed and not so much the Retina Display. But it's really up to you. It depends what's important. If you're a painter and you want to use this to paint beautiful pictures, you may want to go with the Retina Display and it's less important than the processor. So it really matters uh, what you're going to use it for. If you're just looking at your email and watching movies on it, it probably, the retina display won't make that much of a difference for you. However, the design is sleek. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So if you have a small apartment and you don't want to take up a lot of room with a lot of wires, this has got one wire and it will work on Wi-Fi as well. So you pretty much will have one wire going in to plug it into the wall and it will look really cool. So if design is a big deal for you, I think this is one of the most beautiful design computers out there. So the next thing is, do I want to get a laptop? If you're looking for a laptop, there are really two choices in the laptops. It's the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. Now, I had a discussion with a group of people who use both the MacBook Air and the Pro, 
and almost all the professional computer guys who um, can take apart computers and who work in networking systems said, I would never touch the Air. I would only go with the MacBook Pro because it is the powerhouse. It's got the i7 processor. It's got a lot more ports. Um, you know, it's got a great size hard drive. And from the money that you spend buying the initial MacBook Pro, you're getting more uh, than what you get with the Air, which is cheaper. And in order to get the Air up to the processing speed of the MacBook Pro, you'd have to add all these extras, and it would end up costing more than the initial MacBook Pro. However, the Air is small, it's portable, and it has much better battery life. So whereas you won't get a retina display on the Air, you'll only get that on the MacBook Pro, uh, the battery life on this is so much longer uh, than it is on the MacBook Pro that you can pretty much last a day on the Air. So if you're going to school and you don't have a place to plug in, uh, you may want to go with the Air. It's also portable, it's light, you don't even feel it in your bookcase if you're wearing it um, on in a bag. It's also great if you travel a lot and you can pretty much get everything done. What you will find out with the Air is if you don't you know, get the biggest hard drive, the most RAM, um, and the fastest processor, it will not work um, as well as the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro is a better computer, but it's a little heavier. And so if you're just surfing the web and reading your email or going to class and taking notes, or um, you know doing basic graphic uh, work but nothing too fancy with too much video processing needed the air will be a sufficient choice so I have the air and I find that um, I, I pick that up a lot more than I would a MacBook Pro simply because it's so light and it's you can take it anywhere and you can hold it in one hand uh, while you're doing something else which is just an incredible thing uh, to have so I think any one of these is fine. Well now, if you've already made a decision from these five choices, which one you want to go for, now you want to compare. So now um, I'd recommend going into the Apple Store. And as you can see, they have this wonderful site to compare. And I'll put a link to this uh, in my video so that you'll get a chance to do it. So first website has which notebooks do you want, which desktops. So we spoke about the Mini, which is $4.99 here the 21 inch Mac, iMac without the retina display, the 27 inch which means the size of the monitor without the retina display and then ooh, the 27 5K display. If you can afford this one go for it. That's an awesome computer. It's got a quad core. You have a choice between the i5 or the i7. I would definitely go for the i7 if you can afford it and it's an awesome uh, definitely computer. Um, if you go for the mini that's fine. You can go for the i5. I think you do have a choice on some of these to have a dual quad i5 or dual quad, a dual a quad core um, i5 or i7. Definitely go if you can afford it for the quad core um, i7. Those are the best ones to get. And as you can see on the 27 inch, it comes already with a choice of the quad core i5 or i7. Um, if, like I said, if you have to choose, i7s are better than the i5s. And definitely, um, if you can go for the Retina display, which is now, as you could say, 5K, which really means real high resolution, it's cool. Here's the Mac Pro. Um, there's some, a couple of choices in these, obviously. The more expensive ones are the faster ones. But even if you just get the basic one, you'd be good to go. Here are all the notebooks that we talked about. You've got an 11-inch MacBook Air, a 13-inch MacBook Air, a 13-inch MacBook Pro. Those don't have Retina displays. The retina displays come into the 13-inch ones. And as you can see, there isn't that much of a difference. Um, this is $12.99. Remember, uh, I often tell people, look for mid-range ones because you usually get the best value in those. Uh, this one is 15-inch with the uh, retina display. So if you were going to spend $12.99, you're going to get a 13.3-inch uh, you know, uh, screen for that MacBook Pro with a retina display. And you're also getting the i7 processor. So I probably would say this is probably your best buy because if you add in the i7 to any of these it's going to cost another 200 bucks or so. So you're already getting it here. So I would say this is probably the best one in comparison. Now if you really want to do your own comparisons you can launch this full comparison tool on Apple's site which allows you to pick the model that you want. So let's just unpick this one for a moment. So I can select, for example, um, let's say I want to take a look at another Mac Pro. Uh, let's say the 15, 
I don't know, let's look at uh, this one, the 13 inch. So now I can see this is the 13 inch MacBook Pro, this is the regular MacBook Pro, and this is the Air. So you can actually click and add additional items to see what would happen um, as far as the pricing goes. So this is a great tool to use and it gives you a lot of information as to the size, the weight, etc. So hope you enjoyed listening and hope that you can choose the best Mac for you.